What's up, Hobby Maniacs? Rob Bear here today with another interesting look at Tips and Tactics article on the Doom of Mamera book from Forge World. This is the reprint that's come out about four or five years since the original, and it updates the Eldar basically over the seventh edition. Well, the Eldar units that were in here over the seventh edition, and it also gives us some rules for some new units that we came that we saw come out over the past couple of months, like just a couple new Wraith Knights and um, some new models for the Corsairs. Nothing too crazy like brand new they already kind of had rules um so as far as like actual new units we're just basically looking at the two new skatach wraith knights i guess they're called <laughs> who knows how to pronounce half this stuff right half, that's half the fun is, is figuring it out um <laughs> so it's a it's a really good book and we've already talked about the corsair army list which is in and of itself its own detachment you cannot take this as a battle forge list but today we're going to talk about the other war host uh, formations Basically, how you can take those, how you can make your own specific craft world. You can uh, get your own co uh, codex craft world traits and a whole bunch of other stuff in here that work interchangeably back to the Eldar Codex craft world itself, which is really interesting to see. Then we're going to build up in the next video too because, well, that took like 30 minutes to basically go over Warlord traits and all of the... Um, formations and things from the actual war host from the Eldar book so in the next video we're gonna go over the new units in here because there's three new specific ones as well as the new um, I guess the updated rules for 7th edition for units themselves that you can actually take in Eldar um, battleforged armies and also you know as their own formations which this new war host Mamira war host uh, kind of uh, I guess uh, it's a, I guess it's kind of a decurion, but it's kind of not. So I don't know what to call it, but basically it's a new. We'll call it the abridged war host uh, detachment. Let, let, let's go with that. <laughs> There's so many terminology and so much stuff out there. It's hard. It's hard to keep it all straight. But we're gonna get through it. There's a lot of content in here. It is taking almost three videos now to get through everything and basically try to explain it all and uh, relate it over to seventh edition 40k. Which I think is very important because a lot of times, you know, you get these you get these books and people aren't ready for them. And it's good to get a preview or just, hey, who wants to spend 80 bucks on a book? You know, take a look at it. See if it's your cup of tea before you buy it because you're not going to get a really good uh, fair shake on the Forge World site. They don't, they don't know what's competitive half the time. They don't know, hey, um, you know, did you fix the Warp Hunter, for instance? I would like to know, <laughs> you know. Oh, you did. Oh, well, I'll buy the book then. You know, stuff like that. That's what we're going to show you. That's what we're here for so before we get into all that i would like to invite you to stay in the trenches subscribe to this youtube channel and check out the blog spikybitsblog.com and head on over to the longwar.net that's the home of the battle reports for exclusive content and early access videos become a veteran of the long war today and also we'd like to invite you to click on the link up there i'm, I'm only going to say it once i'm only going to say it once but help keep our videos ad free in 2016 here on youtube because we're doing a new initiative uh, there's a lot of free stuff you can pick up over there just be, by becoming a supporter of Spiky Bits and through Patreon. So please click on the link at least once, check it out, and enjoy this ad free video. So let's take a closer look at the second part of our Tips and Tactics series on the Doom of Mamera. I do want to talk about the Mamera book because, you know, for a lot of folks that had the, if you saw the last video, it was uh, about the Corsair's army list. Uh, a lot of folks bought those models back in the day, four or five years ago, and they're great looking models, very fantastic uh, looking Eldar, and I, I, you know, I just pretty much love them. Um, you know, and it's it's cool to see them come out, um, the, uh, whereas, <sighs> Basically what happened was Elder gets a lot of hate and it's it sucks to see such great looking models kind of get overlooked and, and a cool new narrative rule set um, that's pretty well balanced from what I can tell kind of get you know hated on and I, I don't like seeing that and and with, there's actual special characters too for the Mamera book that are also pretty cool and we're going to talk about those and then there's the war hosts as well and there is some OP stuff in here I'll be quite honest and they did nerf some stuff they did change some stuff and we'll get to all that but it's 
you know, it isn't necessarily that, oh, you know, they're so broken and stupid and blah, 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 blah. There's hate for every army out there. And 40K isn't balanced. It will never be balanced. It was never designed to be balanced. It has never been balanced in the 40, 30 years it's been around. All the time that I've played, it's never been balanced. There's always been rock, paper, scissors. So, yeah, if you keep that in mind and try to have an open mind and take a look at what's in here, at least you'll know what you might face a, face off against on the tabletop or what you might be able to play with now if you pick up this book uh, from Forge Roll. So, first off, you've got the... Uh, uh, the war host of Craft World, Craft World Mamera itself. And it's structured very similar to how the Craft World's, um, you know, basically the Kyrion is structured. It's called the War Host. And as I'm trying to find it here on my iPad, uh, let's see, formations, data sheets. I actually got the iBook version, or excuse me, the ebook version, and it's a little bit harder to navigate than I'm used to. Okay, so here we go. So basically what it is, is the Craft World Codex is consists of, you know, the normal core auxiliary and command choices, and those replace the battlefield role. Like if something's heavy, it's not heavy anymore. It might be auxiliary, it might be command, or it might have different benefits and things like that. And alternatively, what makes up a lot of these war hosts is specific um, formations in it of themselves, right? So there is that too. Which is really interesting to see because you you have like for instance there's some there's a formation called the Wraith Constructs which as part of the Eldar Craft World formation if you take it or the War Host it consists of taking just uh, arbitrarily a uh, Hemlock Wraith Fighter a Wraith Lord or a Wraith Knight and that's how a lot of folks were getting those five Wraith Knight armies. So you could actually have more than that, but that was what the points allowed because they're like three plus and then fit them in 1850 list, etc. It seemed only realistic that you could only field five, right? <laughs> um, but you did have, because you did have to take a Guardian Host in order to unlock that. So you had to take your core choice um, and the Guardian Host, and then you could take one to 12 auxiliary choices, one of which being a Wraith Construct. And just for, you know, dramatic effect, there's basically how it works. So you have your core auxiliary and command and then you had your guardian host which is right here one three and then this one has specific rules as well um oh, it's this way that one has specific rules as well for the guardian battle host so that is what you could have right and then it basically went into uh, if you took it specific command restrictions and uh, restrictions and command benefits as well so keep all this stuff in mind here as we go down so you could take one to three of those and one to twelve of these guys right here which were the auxiliaries and I just talked about the Wraith constructs at the bottom because it's got the Wraith Knight and that actually comes into play when we start looking at all this so first off so the War Host of Mimera works very similar and they get into it and then there's this thing called the Pal Courts which is a different formation and the Pal Courts are basically the slang term I guess or you know the moniker in Eldar um, mythology or the Eldar uh, social ethos that those are the craft worlds that there's craft worlds out there, but they're not, they're like the basically the successor chapters of the Space Marines. They're not like the baller, you know, uh, uh, um, you know, Beel Tan or Iandin, you know, which I guess they're not as baller as they used to be, or all the way. They're like, you know, the second string craft worlds. And they call them the Pell Courts, and they might not be quite as powerful, but what they had to do was to survive, they had to become more specialized. And that's what you're going to see on the next page. But for right here, there's the Mamera Guardian Battle Host, which is similar to to the Guardian uh, host right here and this becomes your core choice should you desire it and all of these are interchangeable with the Guardian war host or the war host out of the craft world book so think of it like that it's interchangeable with codex craft world but you can mix and match these as well and there's certain benefits and certain restrictions so it's a lot of reading and I'm, I'm sure I'll misspeak about something so obviously correct me in the comments and so everybody's straight. A lot of times when I go back and cut the videos, I'm like, oh, I said that wrong. Let me try to correct myself. I don't always catch it, and I apologize, because there's a lot of information here, right? All right, so basically, if you take this as your core choice, it gets the special rules, which are on the next page, a lone, of Lonely Pass and Fortress of, Dis uh, Fortress of Discipline, which basically restricts you to a certain build out of this formation right here. So that's how they do that. Now, when you flip the page here, you get the War Host of the Pal Courts, which is a completely different thing. If you go the Pal Courts Battle Host, which there is a benefit because you get you basically get Craft World traits now, which is really cool, similar to the Marines, but now you get Craft Worlds, but you can only take from right here, right? So 
well, let's just uh, read it out here. When seeking to represent the varied and enigmatic, enigmatic forces of the Pell courts using the Warhost system, follow the rules. The following rules can be used to customize the core choice available to the Eldar army, which is normally right here, the Guardian Battle Horse that we, that we already talked about. When using these rules, no matter... No other types of core choices may be selected as part of the detachment, but auxiliary and command choices may be selected as normal. So you get on your ch on your chart here. Now this is going to look different depending if you have the codex or the iBook or the eBook, but basically you get the idea. So here's all your auxiliary your auxiliary tree here, and these a lot of these are specific formations as well as just hey, if you take the wraith construct. Uh, the wraith constructs it's this it's not its own specific formation so just keep that in mind as well see it's a lot of book work a lot of flipping between the books and you know I'm all digital now because I move around so much and I like to have all my stuff on me and well books weigh a lot so I don't have the actual war host uh, the actual craft world book but it would be super more helpful if I had both the books you know basically right next to me here but we're gonna have to make do with the ebook reader here so that being said what I like about this is it gives you these craft world traits that you can basically customize uh, to basically what you want to do. And as you saw from the core choice available here, which you can't take in regards to here, um, you can't mix the Mimera with the Pell Quartz because obviously Mimera is its own craft world. Pell Quartz is a generic craft world. You know, think lesser chapter, the lesser successor chapter of the Space Marines. They draw, some of these special rules are still going to draw from these craft world traits areas here. So on Lonely Pass, a battle host must include one to three units of Eldar Rangers. And then there's a benefit while within 12 inches of the Rangers from this battle host, all Guardian units that are part of the battle host gain to move through cover. It's okay, but it basically locks you into certain things. And then the Fortress of Discipline, a battle host must include one to three units of war walkers or a single unit of wasp assault walkers. When a unit of war walkers or wasp assault walkers chosen as part of this formation fires an enemy unit already targeted by the Eldar Guardian unit from the same formation, which you're going to have. In that shooting phase, it gains the pinning special rules for that attack. And actually, pinning is kind of interesting. Not a lot of things get it anymore, so it's cool to see. So there you go. That's basically how it works. And that's your core. Uh, two different types of core, but this is your only core if you go PAL Quartz. And if you go PAL Quartz, um, basically you get these special rules. Forgotten Remnants, a PAL Core battle host may have up to two of the Crass World traits applied to it, modifying the units. Um, that may be included with it as well as the special rules it receives. These craft world traits cost no additional points. A war host detachment that includes a PAL court battle host may include no other types of core choices. We talked about that, but may include other PAL court battle horse. So you can do multiple, so like two lesser craft worlds teaming together, as long as they have the same craft world traits applied to them. So it's basically unlocking trees and doing things like that. So all the changes is basically now the the flow chart basically splits. Like, do you want to go uh, my Era, or do you want to go Craft World Eldar with some of these new ones here, which they introduce a new one called Support Choices just to make things even more complicated, but it's how they're sneaking in Lords of War on everybody from this book. So it makes sense that they're trying to work everything in. So you want to go Pal, Pal, Pal Quartz or do you want to go Mimera? That's what you got to decide. If you go Pal Quartz, you can double Pal Quartz. <laughs> but if you want to go Mimera, you you're, you can still do other cores uh, from the Codex Craft World um, Warhost detachment list. A lot of information. Hopefully I presented it as best I can. Now, Let's get to the nitty gritty. So we've already read some of these craft world traits. This one here, Children of Cain. All Guardian Defender units must be replaced with Storm Guardian squads. In addition, Storm Guardian uh, models that score a 6 on the hit in the first turn of Assault gain plus 1 their strength when resolving their attack. I don't know how good that is for all that. We'll keep going. Crosswords of Eternity. Battle host may include 0 to 1 Harlequin troops. Pretty cool. And or 0 to 1 Corsair Reaver bands. Uh, see the Corsair army list in this book. They are treated as having the faction Eldar for the duration of the game, which is super helpful. Um, interesting mix there. Not exactly sure how it's going to pan out, but I'm sure there's some combos. Uh, disciplines evolve. The battle host may include one of three Vols Wrath support batteries. So you get that D, um, the D cannon there, which is pretty fun, or you know the Wraith cannon, or just the normal stuff that we're all used to seeing. Uh, all Guardian Defender units in the battle host must take one heavy weapon platform per five Guardians in the unit, paying the normal cost for the additional weapons. Okay, that's fair. Craft World of Dreams. The battle host must include three Wraith Blade units as required to field only zero to one. 
and is required to field 0 to 3 Guardian units, all race blade units bought as part of this detachment, gaining the Crusader special rule. So a little bit of bonus there, helps you get an assault quicker, and then there's another way, uh, there's another way that you can actually, you'll see that does this in the actual units themselves. And a little bit of tech, we might get to this video, we might not. Tomb Ship of the Fallen Heroes. The battle host must replace the Far Seer with the Spirit Seer or Wraith Seer and may include 0 1 Wraith Lord. If the Wraith Lord or Wraith Seer is chosen as the army's Warlord, then 2d6s are rolled to determine its Wraith or Warlord trait, and the controlling player may select which result to use. Now, that one's really cool because you're. Um, you're basically allowed to take a, a Wraith Lord or a Wraith Seer, and a Wraith Seer is uh, the, basically the Psychic Wraith Lord unit that rules are in here. Now, remember, there's only six of these Warlord traits in Codex Eldar, and the fact that you basically now have a 1 in 3 chance with a reroll to get what you want, basically if you're playing a three game tournament, you know guaranteed, uh, by odds, not guaranteed, that you'll probably get the combination that you want to work or to make your army more beneficial. Obviously you don't want to set your army up to automatically run on that, but it gives you some food from some food for thought right there. And let's go over the Warlord traits real quick because I wanted to point out one thing. Let me find them real quick. So the one that I like the most out of the Warlord traits for the Eldar is an eye on distant events, and that's the one that I believe Eldrag comes with still. Choose up to D3 units in your army. These units gain the scout special rule. Now, that's army. That's not detachment. That's not whatever. So anything that they ally with, this doesn't say Codex Eldar specific. It's your army, and your army consists of you know, X battle force detachments, allies, blah, 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 blah. So now think about that. There's some units in here that we'll talk about later that can really benefit from having the scout special rule. Most notably, uh, the new um, uh, warp uh, warp fighter, not the warp fighter, the one that shoots the D uh, templates that are barrage. That, having the ability to actually shoot out a D template, not the blast, but the template, being able to get up in somebody's grill, scout, and then be able to move even more because it's a fast skimmer. Drop that template on somebody. By drop, I mean you have to place it on top uh, of the cannon. Extends out eight inches, but it, it would definitely um, give your enemy pause if you see a squadron or three of those coming up the flank and scouting, and then knowing that you got all that D all up on your grill. It's a vehicle, it's semi hard to destroy. You know, it's an interesting scenario there. I thought it was pretty neat. Another one is the split fire rule. It's okay. Uh, the warlord may reroll saving throws a one. Might be interesting if you take it on the wraith seer or the wraith lord itself. So these are all pretty good so far. Um, the the warlord in his unit may add three to the dice roll and determine how far they can run. That would be beneficial for wraith lords or a uh, uh, excuse me a wraith lord. Uh, squadron of three because you can take them by threes now. The, I, I'm not sure if the Wraith Seer can join because technically they're monstrous creatures, but I will have to take a look at that as we get in here. Um, we talked about the eye on distance events and um, the ambush of blades is a 12 inch thing that all uh, friendly units with the Eldar faction within 12 inches of him reroll two wound rolls of one. So it's almost like preferred enemy, but not quite. But remember, you got some options here with things that aren't normally Eldar Faction becoming Eldar Faction. So a lot of this, there's some synergy here. And as you dig deeper and dig deeper and start looking at rules, you start seeing it, right? Aspect Lord Shrine, the battle host must include at least three Aspect Warrior units. Form a single Aspect. May, this may not include Crimson Hunters because they're vehicles, but this may be the same Aspect across all the Palcourt's battle hosts in the same army. It's required and is required to feel only zero to three guardians. So you can specialize and not have to take guardians just like the other one. No Dire Avenger shrine formations may be included as part of this detachment unless chosen. the chosen aspect is that of the Dire Avenger. So Dire Avengers can put out a lot of fire, something to think about. Fortress of Discipline, we talked about that. Swift to Anger, the battle host may include one to three units of Viper Jet Bikes or a single unit of Hornet Attack Skimmers. We talked about those and we talked about the Wasp actually last video because they're part of the Corsairs. They also have normal Eldar rules in here, which we'll get to. Uh, the formation gained the outflank special rule and may reroll failed reserve rolls. Halls of Martial Splendor, the battle host must replace the Farseer with an Altar. When fighting a challenge, an autoc from this formation may re-roll any missed two-hit rolls. And then the strong standalone, the battle host must include a single squadron of Night Spinner, Fire Prism, or Warp Hunter Grav Tanks. Warp Hunter is the one I was talking about, the one with the D-weapon. Taking a squadron of three of those, which you can do out of here, 
is pretty bananas. Now their D chart is a little bit nerfed. It is neg one right off the bat, just like the um, the Wraith Guard, the uh, War Size. But uh, you know, keep that in mind. It's still very deadly. Nobody wants to get hit by that. Dark Elder Harlequins are Elder Corsairs faction. Uh, save more Palcor War Hosts in in an identical configuration. So just keep that in mind. Um, it's very hard to ally with them, uh, but it gives you some definite benefits right there as well. So um, if you're trying to go like Wraith heavy and you might not be able to get in those vehicles, this might be the way to do it. It's hard to say. It, 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 so far, everything seems very balanced in here. So now they're basically giving you the complete breakdown of the host of the craft world, the command choice, uh, the Lord of the Undying Host, zero to three command, and that's what they're basically summarizing what's in this book. In addition to, of course, what's in the other craft world, auxiliary choices right here. You can kind of see them all: the uh, Shadow Specter Shrine, Kane's Hawk Squadron, Fires of the Phoenix, Fist of All, Hornet Sworn, Warp Phoenix or Phalanx, and support choices: Hammer of All. Uh, Sky Hunter Squadron, Sky Reaver Raiding Echelon, and Wraith Titans. And oh yes, if you want a Phantom Titan in your army, that's the one for you right there, baby. <laughs> All 2,500 points coming at you. <laughs> so the first up is the Lord of the Undying Host. That's your command choice. And remember, well, here, we'll flip this. Well, we've already seen it. That's fine. Now, I like this one because this one's interesting. So you take a Wraith Seer, which we'll get to. That's the Psychic Wraith Lord. Uh, one to three units of Wraith Blades and Wisdom from Beyond the Veil. If taken as the Army's Warlord, the Wraith Seer may roll 2d6 for determining the war Warlord trait. We already talked about the importance of that. Um, now, this is a special rule that confers that you don't have to take the Palcourt Battle Horse. You just get it. So, And remember, this is a command choice. You can just take this out of Eldar Codex Eldar Craft Worlds now, circumventing all of that, but still getting that tech. So, at first, it seems like a lot, and it's taken me a lot to wrap my head around. I did a lot of, a lot of research, a lot of notes, a lot of crunching numbers, a lot of strategizing. Still, probably going to get something wrong, but just bear with me. This is, <laughs> this is where I'm at right now. Bound to serve, Wraith Blade units from this formation may reroll uh, missed close combat attacks of one on the turn they charge into a combat that includes the Wraith Seer chosen as part of this formation. So what that does is that gets your Billy Badass Wraith, uh, uh, Wraith Blade close combat dudes all up in the mix. I think it's pretty cool. Okay. Now, uh, the Shadow Specter's Shrine is an auxiliary choice. And that gets you the Shadow Spectre Aspect Warriors, which we also we haven't covered in here. But they're very similar to Warp Spiders, but not quite as good in my opinion. They got great looking models from Forge World. They've been around for a while, and it's really cool to see them actually getting some love right, right now. So, special rules, Rites of Twilight, all models in formation roll an additional D6 for all thrust moves and select the two highest dice when determining the distance they move. Remember that if you're a jet pack, you get to make that thrust move in the assault phase. So, being able to um, kind of work the numbers there definitely helps and not have a detractor like the fire, uh, excuse me, the uh, warp spiders do. Shrine Keepers, models with this formation can reroll failed morale checks, pinning checks, and fear checks. Spectral Blade, all enemy models within 12 inches of the XR that is part of this formation must reroll all successful fear tests. And that actually comes into play because you'll see when we cover the Shadow Spectres, fear is the name of the game when it comes to those guys and negative leadership modifiers. So remember, Space Marines technically are not fearless. You can make a Space Marine, uh, depending on how you do it, you can make a Space Marine check for fear. Um, or even morale check actually twice you could do it in a psychic phase you could do it in a shooting phase theoretically they could fall off the board if they fail both if their modifiers were low enough just some food for thought it's been theorized for a long time but nobody's actually been able to make a viable list I would say not viable I would say reliable list doing it uh, the Kane's Hawk Squadron is a squadron of two to three Eldar Nightwings. That's that sweet swing wing uh, forge world fighter that kind of looks like a Tomcat, but not really. Uh, it's got some great great rules here. When targeting a zoom-in flyer, each Nightwing from the formation may choose to add the ignore cover special rule to any one weapon attack per turn. Um, if it's in reserves and the enemy flyer is brought into play from reserves, the Kane's Hawk Squadron controlling player may reroll attempts to bring the Kane's Hawks into play in their next turn. Kind of neat. Fires of the Phoenix is another one. Two Eldar Phoenix bombers, ginormous models, great looking stuff. 
realistically, probably not going to see this very often. Um, Flaming Pyre, when multiple Phoenix Bombers from the same squadron make shooting attacks against the same non-flyer unit, the Phoenix Bombers may reroll all failed to hits to hit and to wound rolls a one. Okay, I mean, if you if you bought those models and you got them, hey man, that's a formation for you. Probably won't see a whole lot of that. Fist of All, auxiliary choice, two to three war punters, love it. All war partners brought as part of this formation. Form a vehicle squadron and must take the same upgrades. Oh, I love vehicle squadrons. So good. Warp Breach. Now, this is where it gets saucy because they have a D weapon normally, but they can basically link their blasts here, depending on how many you take, to form a either a 5-inch twin link blast or a massive 7-inch twin link blast as well. Um, which, uh, depending on the situation, you may want to do it. And remember, this is something that you could theoretically give Scout to and get that jumping up the side, doing some crazy stuff. It also They also have two modes of fire. They can do the barrage and they can do the template. Just stuff to keep in mind right there. Hornet Swarm Auxiliary Choice. Those are those great looking uh, kind of little ninja flyers that are smaller than a uh, Falcon, but about the same size as a Viper-ish. Um, they have a special rule called Swift Assault. On the turn in which the squadron enters play from reserves, it may use the Jinx special rule and fires all weapons of full ballistic skill as long as the squadron does not also move flat out, in which case the restriction of the Skimmer Assault rules apply. Um, but they also have an interesting rule, too, that lets them move their flat out and still snap fire, I believe. I think it's called Aerial Assault. Death now. When rolling to bring a Hornet Squadron on into play from reserves, the score required to bring them into play is 2+, plus, as long as the control player achieved at least one primary or secondary objective in their previous turn. Oh, no, you did not. Wasp, uh, Wasp uh, Phalanx, as his auxiliary choice, 3-6 to six of them bad boys, Cloud Breakers on any turn in which a Warp a Wasp Phalanx is deployed onto the table using Deep Strike rules. It may reroll any failed power field saves in all of its shooting attacks, gain the Twin Link and Pinning Special Rules. That's pretty bananas. If you're going to tape Wasps, uh, you want these? You want this formation right here. So you want them in threes. Hammer of all. <laughs> uh, either one Cobra, or one Scorpion, super heavy tank. You know, <laughs> the Billy Badass of tanks, uh, flying skimmer tanks that are out there. Well, that's them right there. Pride of the hunt. If any of the models from this formation are destroyed, the opposing player gets one victory point. This counts as a secondary objective. Fair enough. Icon of Glory. All models from the same army. Remember army. Within six inches of any part of the vehicle's hull from this formation, may reroll failed regroup tests. Very important when you're taking them as Corsairs because uh, their regroup tests are different. Skyhunter Squadron here. Three, one to three Lynx grab tanks, which have been nerfed, and we'll talk about that. Uh, on the Wings of Flame, when deployed onto the table using Deep Strike Special Rule, a Sky Hunter Squadron gains a four plus cover save until the end of the controlling player's next turn. Um, all of them form a vehicle squadron and must take the same upgrade. So one to three right there. It's cool, but they are kind of pricey. Sky Reaver Raiding Echelon is a support squadron, which uh, is a Vampire Raider, an Autark, Storm Guardian, or Guardian Defender, Vols Wraith Support Battery, and, well, let's just say it's a, it's, a, it's a large, very big model to begin with. Special Rules, Orbiter Reavers. On any turn in which a unit chosen as part of formation disembarks from the Vampire Raider, the Vampire Raider gains the Assault Vehicle Special Rule. Cool. Vampire Rider taken as part of this formation may also transport artillery models with crewmen taking up a single transport capacity point in each artillery model using up three. Okay, that's fair. Um, you know, we'll talk about that model as you see it in here and how much uh, capacity it has. Wraith Titans, well, just when you thought he saw it all, no, nope. <laughs> here they are. Formation one, one Eldar Revenant Knight or one Eldar, Eldar Phantom Titan. That's the big baddie. And 0 to 2 Wraith Knights. And what happens is the Wraith Knights can basically intercept the charge as long as the distance isn't greater to the Wraith Knight itself. So, you know, smart money is you take two Wraith Knights, you put them, you know, equal distant apart from whatever Titan you have in front of it, and therefore things that don't get around your, uh, you know, your, your basically blockade line here won't be able to assault the Titan, and you'll be able to basically intercept them. And there isn't much out there that can kill a Wraith Knight, much less a Titan, but, you know, it's, it is what it is. If something's coming in hot, it's probably going to be able to take out a Titan. So it's going to be a specialized unit, and you're probably going to need the Wraith Knight to at least buy you time uh, for that Revenant or Phantom to get away. The Revenants can use their jump packs and move 36. The Phantom's a little bit more flat-footed, 
uh, but it does have a rather large movement in and of itself. So uh, just keep that in mind there. So you got to, there's some little, little small restrictions there, but you know, um, Revenant, 900 points, uh, Eldor Frank and Titan, 2,500, I believe, Wraith Knights, 3, 350, something like that. I forget what they are, but you know, in and of itself, very expensive formation. You're not going to see that in a lot of tournament lists, but it gives you the option to basically not have to take a Lord of War slot. A lot of these do actually not have to take a Lord of War slot and you basically slot it in, uh, you know, willy nilly into your war host there. So that was <laughs> basically the new additions to the craft or the war host craft world uh, schema I guess so to speak so you got a couple of dead ends but you also got a whole bunch of new options down the flow chart of formation awesomeness how that you can feel now we went a little long on this video there's a lot to talk about so obviously we're gonna get to the actual units the new units themselves the special characters from my mirror as well as the new units that you can ally in or basically take straight into your detachments of Eldar because they have the designation stuff like this Wraith Knight right here the Skatach, Skatach Lord of War Eldar so a lot of the formations in or excuse me a lot of the units in the rest of this book here have that designation you're just able to basically choose them as part of a codex craft world list battle forged on you know whatever whatever you want to take there's probably a use for these units in here as well as the special characters in the front of the book that we haven't even talked about the shadow specter the shadow specter um aspect warriors oh um and the exarch and then there is a new farseer as well I think that's it actually and then all the news back here so stay tuned for that video that will be coming up in next in series